Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Thank you all so much for being here. My name is David Chair. I am the director of the state portion of the Congresswoman's Congressional Office, and we are so glad uh, to be able to host this event for you all and put this on. Um, an event like this takes a lot of helping hands, so I've got a few thank yous I want to get through before I turn it over to the Congresswoman. Um, first and foremost, uh, on behalf of the staff of the Congresswoman, I really want to thank all of you, uh, the, the students and um, the teachers and parents and caregivers. The students' talent is incredible. It was a joy for us to see all that you've done. Um, thank you also, of course, to the teachers and caregivers and parents who have taught and nurtured all these folks. It's really a remarkable, remarkable display. So the staff, we put on a lot of events, and this is truly one of the joys of our time. Um, a few other folks I want to thank, Vermont College of Fine Arts for welcoming us back into this space. They've hosted this event a number of times. We're really grateful to them uh, for doing it again this year. The Vermont Arts Council was incredibly important, in particular Troy Hickman, uh, for your support in providing historical knowledge about this event and to the Arts Council in general for your financial contributions uh, to putting this event on um, and to supporting our esteemed judges as well as lots of other parts of putting on an event like this. I want to thank Ellen McCullough Lovell for her generous uh, financial support and longtime support of the arts and public service. Also a thank you to Lisa Bressler from the Vermont Agency of Education for helping us spread the word about this event around the state to teachers. Of course, we want to thank our amazing judges, uh, Stefania Urich, uh, Harlan Mack, and Cynthia Cagle, all of whom uh, have put in a lot of time and deep thought and careful review of the artwork. Uh, came up here earlier this week and been doing a lot of work on this, so thank you to you all, and we'll have some further introductions uh, of them in a few minutes. We also want to thank the team at Senator Welch's office. Uh, when the senator was a representative, they put this event on before us, and they did a, uh, a huge amount in terms of teaching us all that we needed to do and giving us a lot of materials to do it. Um, one other note I want to uh, uh, make is that this is our first year doing it uh, in the Congresswoman's office, and so we will be um, sending around a survey for folks to fill out. We certainly want to learn by doing and get better and make this a better event even in the future. So uh, we look forward to getting your constructive feedback on that. And a final thank you, this is a team effort putting this on, but an especially big thank you to Morgan Nichols on our staff who really led this whole thing. And so a big thank you to her. So as, as you folks know, this is a national competition. Nearly every congressional district in the nation participates. Uh, but it did start right here in Vermont, which I think is really cool. Uh, former Representative and Senator Jim Jeffords is the one who created it nationally. Uh, so we're, it's really nice for us here in Vermont especially. Uh, but for the very first time in this competition, it is my great pleasure to introduce uh, a congresswoman to uh, speak to you. Uh, so without any further ado, Congresswoman Becca Bell. Oh, it's so wonderful to see you all. It's, it's such a treat, um, not just to be outside of DC and back in my home district, but to be able to spend this time with all of you. So good morning. I couldn't be more thrilled to be here. I'm Congresswoman Becca Ballant, as David said, the first woman to represent Vermont in Congress. <laughs> And I'm so proud to be carrying on this uh, incredibly important tradition here in Vermont of celebrating student art. As a former teacher, as a mom, as a writer, um, I know how important it is to foster creativity and a love of the arts in our students and to make that a continued priority in schools. I was fortunate enough at a very early age um, to be taught that creativity was something of real value. It wasn't an add-on, uh, that it would help me to expand my understanding of the world. And in my adulthood, I've come to see that imagination and innovation greatly contribute to more vibrant, more robust communities. And in a larger, more vital sense, creative endeavors simply make life worth living. It's not an afterthought. It's a core part of who we are as humans. And creative pursuits have been 
really the steadiest guideposts in my life. When my ailing grandmother moved in with us when I was in high school, we had to do a lot of shuffling of rooms in my house to make a space for her. And my siblings and all, I all had to make you know, space sacrifices. And I remember not worrying so much about where I would sleep. I was worried about where I was going to have my space to do art. I wanted to make sure that I'd have a corner to continue to create. And my childhood and my early adulthood was really filled with hours and hours of printmaking and cartoon drawing and still life drawing. And in high school, I added watercolor. And then when I was in college, I added design classes. And that has really been a through line to my political career as well. I need creative outlets in order for me to deal with the intensity that is politics. I want to say, too, as I was looking around downstairs, it's clear that all of you are incredibly creative and innovative in your thinking. And something that I noticed in the art as I walked around downstairs is that clearly we are all struggling with such big emotions right now because of the pandemic, because of the isolation that came from that, and because of the larger social and political angst that we find ourselves in. And I see that reflected so beautifully in the art. So thank you for being vulnerable. Thank you for contributing your art to this competition. It is not easy to show somebody your creative side and then to hang it up on a wall for other people to walk by. So I want to just thank you regardless of you know, who ends up winning this amazing competition. The fact that you were able to contribute your artwork is an amazing gift to yourself, but also to everybody else in that room. So thank you for that. The Congressional Art Competition, as David said, was started by Congressman Jim Jeffords, who then went on to be um, a state senator. And when I walk through my building in DC, I, I work in an office building called Longworth, and I usually walk outside to get to the, con you know, to get to the Capitol because I need fresh air to clear my mind. But on those days when it's rainy or cold or windy, or my staff is telling me we're too rushed to be able to go outside, that I have to go in the tunnels, I always know that there's something wonderful and magical waiting for me down there, which is all of the artwork sent in from every congressional district from across the country. And every single time, and I drive my staff a little crazy, every single time I slow down by certain pieces. And I always say the same thing. Can you believe a high school student did that? Can you believe that, that someone who's a, a sophomore, a junior, or a senior in high school did that, and that could be on the wall of a gallery anywhere in this country. That's the amazing gift that this competition brings to all of us. So art has always been extremely important to me, and it continues to be important to me. But now it feels like an absolute imperative for all of us. In these dark times, we need creativity to assuage our grief, to celebrate our triumphs, to soothe our loneliness, to remind us all of our shared humanity, and honestly, just to simply delight in beauty and in imagination. So I want to thank all the teachers here as well for, for creating space in your schools where students and young artists can feel safe and tune the rest of the world out and just create. That was a place of refuge for me throughout high school and in college. And I just want to take a moment right now. Everybody, thank you, teachers. <laughs> and congratulations to all the students and the teachers and the parents and the schools and the arts organizations and community partners who have made this time possible for all of us. I'm so thankful 
that I get to represent a state that values and celebrates the arts and creativity. And of course, a special thank you to the students. You are fueling our imagination. You are shining light into darkness and you are giving us hope that we have better days ahead. So thank you. Next up, we are going to have Amy Cunningham from the Vermont Arts Council to announce the county winners. When you are announced, if you could please come up the stairs on that side where Morgan is standing, you'll come across the stage, shake some hands, get a picture taken, and go down on that side. And uh, we're very excited. Good morning. What an honor to be here. My name's Amy Cunningham. and. Uh, I am uh, representing the Vermont Arts Council. Uh, what a joy to see the incredible array of work downstairs. I'm just really overwhelmed by the talent. So I have the, the honor of announcing the county winners. And I will begin with Bennington County. Uh, and the student's name is Lillian Bombria. Is this perfect? She's from Arlington Memorial High School. Her teacher is Christy Wood. Congratulations, Next up, we have Caledonia County. The winner from Caledonia County is Ellery Norwood. The work is Simple Joy from Linden Institute. Elaine Titor is the teacher. Congratulations, Ellery. Thank you. Next up, we're going in alphabetical order on these counties, if you hadn't determined that already. Chittenden County. No electric. The work is Chinatown from the Burlington Technical Center. Teacher is Ashley Stagner. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Congratulations, Noah. Next up is Lamoille County. The winner from Lamoille County is Ronan Stefanski. The Modern Dilemma is the work from Green Mountain Tech. Teachers Matt Neckers. Come on down, Ronan. Next up is uh, Orange County, and the student winner is Madeline Houghton. The work is My Storm, My Peace, My Calm. From Blue Mountain Union High School, teacher is Jennifer Doobie. <laughs> All right, uh, moving on to Orleans County. And the student is Isha McNulty. The work is called Boys Don't Cry from Lake Region Union High School. Teacher is Stephanie Harper. Congratulations. Wonderful. We have the teacher accepting the award. Wonderful. Thank you, Stephanie. Terrific. <clears throat> All right, we're moving on to Rutland County, and the student winner is Gareth Fox. Talk between past and future self. 
from Pulteney High School. The teacher is Melissa Christensen. Congratulations, Gara. <laughs> and next up we have Washington County. The student winner is Ava Putre. Beauty is in the eye of the butterfly. From Harwood Union High School, teacher is Krista Varialto. And last but not least, we have Windsor County. Student is Dylan Moss. The work is crabbing from Woodstock Union High School. Teachers Katrina Jimerson. Thank you. Next up, we're going to have the Judges Choice Awards. Each of the judges will be uh, handing out uh, an award. First up, we will have Cynthia Cagle. Cynthia Cagle is a Mexican-American artist whose work explores the metaphysical relationship between identity and nature. Using her experiences as a biracial woman, Cynthia creates paintings, collages, and murals that investigate themes related to biology, relationships, generational trauma, and the impact of colonialism. Born and raised in Los Angeles, Cynthia studied primatology, which included stints at the Gibbon Conservation Center and Museum of Natural History. She received her BA in biological anthropology and studio art from Pitzer College, and she relocated to Vermont in 2004 with her family. Leveraging her unique style to reckon with her own story and drawing on her passion for flora and fauna, Cynthia's work is activist in nature, as well as a deeply personal interrogation of what it means to be of Mexican American and indigenous ancestry, a woman and a mother. She creates her distinctive imagery, ancestors, birds, animals, and color with oil paint on wood, as well as in other mediums such as ceramics, graphite, watercolor, printmaking, and acrylics. Cynthia. Hello, thank you so much for having me here today. It's been just an incredible experience seeing so much talent in the room downstairs from our young people in Vermont. Um, okay, artists seek to make sense of the world through image and color, line and shape. This is exactly what this young artist from Caledonia County has done. Owen Young Allen's painting, Healing Childhood Trauma, takes the complex theme of repairing the past and offers a renewed vision of healing. The figure featured in this work is a young person whose skin is a patchwork quilt. The child is literally sewing themselves together, patiently stitching a tear in the fabric of self. The tear is on the forehead of the subject of the painting, the hands raised and carefully healing the rip with needle and thread. The background is a blurry expanse of undefined space, providing the viewer with the opportunity to focus on the unfolding story of the child's attempt to suture the past. The layers of color, blues and greens and a plum-like violet, evoke a dreamlike quality. And yet the lighting of the painting offers a sense of realism as well. This contrast of objective materiality and uncanny imagery heightens the experience of looking at the art. Through color and brush stroke, Owen Young Allen has created a deep sense of loss and melancholy, a mature project that suggests not just the versatility from a technical standpoint, but the importance of theme and narrative. A hopeful message, perhaps, that with time, healing even a torn garment may be mended. <clears throat> Excuse me. Owen. I don't know where you are in this room, 
But thank you for your courage and honesty. Some of the best art is that which speaks raw truths as you, as you have done here. The depth of your work will resonate with many who get the opportunity to see your painting. Congratulations. The next Judge's Choice Award will be delivered by Harlan Mack. Harlan Mack is a multidisciplinary artist working narratively through painting, sculpture, and oral storytelling to build a fictitious future world that regards themes of experience, environment, labor history, and potential. In addition to his work as an artist, Harlan serves as part-time MFA faculty at Northern Vermont University and manages the sculpture program at Vermont Studio Center in Johnson, Vermont. Harlan. Hi everyone, it's so nice to be here and see all your faces. Um, I think first off I just want to mention how just blown away by all of the work that I saw um, in the show. It's really wonderful. Um, so I'm really, really happy to be one of the judges here. Um, so, um, when I first saw Logan's piece, um, I, I just, I was like immediately floored. I, and, and there's so many really wonderful elements to this piece, and they really reminded me of my experience as a learner, as an artist, and how um, we create a composition and how we learn to create a composition. And the, the ability of Logan Sudol to see light in the, throughout the entire composition and then relay that back to us with like, this really emotional attention, I think was what took me right away. Um, so, I mean, I, I think really the first thing that I noticed is that the entire piece is extremely complete. Um, so, like, every element is accounted for um, and then every element actually has this impact on the eye um, the color in the piece is really masterful. It's something that I think a lot of learners take um, an incredible amount of time to sort of pick up on. Um, and um, the, you know, my favorite detail in this piece is the the reflective light on the on the passenger side side window. Um, it's it's sort of it indicated to me that there was like an extreme level of detail and awareness uh, with the artist. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and I found that actually, you know, I think that level of awareness is something that's one of maybe the more, most difficult things to learn as a young artist um, and to create a composition that's so um, just thorough and um, I don't know, there's so much to it. Um, but I'm, I think mostly I'm just really excited to see Logan's work progress and see how, like, how your life as an artist unfolds. And uh, I'm really excited by this piece. And you can ask them, I was, I was like, right away, I was like, this one over there it makes my heart warm. So I appreciate it. Thank you.
The next Judge's Choice Award will be delivered by Stefania Urist. Stefania Urist is an interdisciplinary artist who addresses the fraught and intertwined relationship between humans and nature by utilizing natural materials and in installations, sculptures, and prints. Urist earned her Master of Fine Arts degree from the School of the Art Institute of Chicago in 2022, BFA from the Rhode Island School of Design in 2013, and has attended multiple artist residencies and fellowships. Her dedication and skills are evident in the numerous grants and awards she has received to create new work in group and solo shows and sculpture gardens around the US. Stefania. Uh, first off, I'd like to reiterate how strong all of the work that we saw was. We were here for hours longer than we were expecting to be because we really wanted to investigate each and every piece. And um, even if you didn't win an award today, I really want to strongly encourage everyone in this room to keep making artwork, um, whether you do that in your career or just for yourself. Um, it's so important and there's so much talent here. So please continue to foster that creativity and keep going. Uh, so my choice for the Judges' Choice Award is White Noise by Vivian Source. I chose this piece because of the conceptual depth and technical ability exhibited in this drawing. The drawing, hatching technique, and perspective is really strong and unique. There are lots of hidden details, both in the subject matter and in the mark-making skills. Uh, the circular peephole draws the viewer in and asks really important questions. The concept really resonates with me because of the climate change crisis that we are all experiencing uh, globally. The way this drawing exhibits the screaming of the media, people, and the planet has turned into white background noise. Uh, that idea is very provocative. I particularly love how the buildings and windows are lit up highlighting that people are watching this flood and disaster happen, but unable to do anything about it. Congratulations, Vivian. I hope you keep drawing and making art. So now I'm going to, I have the pleasure of announcing the third place winner. So the third place winner that we all agreed upon um, unanimously of the Congressional Art Competition is Apolina Mabelchi. I'm so sorry if I uh, pronounced her name wrong. Um, her photo is looking away. This photo demonstrates very high skill and technical photo ability. The tonal range in the black and white photo shows that the lighting was perfect and it shows in the details. The focus and detail in the face is amazing while blurring the background and focus that's to bring focus onto the subject. The subject's gaze is confident but defiant. They are constantly, they are consciously ignoring the camera, knowing and acknowledging its existence but consciously looking away. The conceptual depth of this piece, a portrait of a young person choosing their inner calm over outer distress, resonates, especially in light of recent events such as the global movement towards racial equality and contemporary fight for self-identified identity in marginalized communities. So, social justice is incredibly timely and important, so the idea that this person is finding inner calm is very powerful and important. Thank you so much for your submission, and congratulations, Apolina. Please continue to make work.
Hello again. For second place winner in the Congressional Arts Competition, we are pleased to announce Bennington County Bella Ingenieri's painting entitled Transformer Rhetorical Questions. Ingenieri's Transformer Rhetorical Questions is both, both a poignant tribute to the power of art. The title refers to Lou Reed's seminal 1972 album, Transformer, and a richly composed, conceptually complex examination of identity within the queer community. Like Reed's album, this painting rocks. Ingenieri has offered the viewer a double portrait. The two faces seem to meld into one another, and the area where they overlap is an extraordinary exploration of transparency. The detail and warmth of the faces pictured draw the viewer in, and the ambiguous expressions of the subject stoke curiosity as to, as to the story being told by the painting. Surrounding the somber faces are a number of symbols, all richly painted in hues of yellow. The Greek letter lambda, carnations and triangles. What these symbols have in common is their resonance within the struggle for the LGBTQT plus rights. Clearly this painting is telling a story that is both bound in history as well as personal identity and is so relevant today. The fact that this painting is inspired by and referencing the Lou Reed album Transformer is vital to understanding the rich conceptual depth of this piece. Reed was a leader during the 70s in questioning heterosexual norms, using his music to offer listeners a richer, broader definition of sexual orientation. Produced by David Bowie, the album is seen to this day in a positive light within the struggle for LGBTQT plus rights. This piece is technically complex and beautifully rendered. That's obvious. What takes it to another level is the way in which its symbolism References in text challenge the viewer. As an artist, Ingenieri plunges deeply into the way in which imagery, color, and line can tell a story, <clears throat> and can also echo and amplify both history and emotion. It makes sense the piece has the words rhetorical questions in the title. The artist wrote in a statement accompanying the piece, quote, and this is important, is the pride that queer people feel really self-assurance and happiness in their own identities? Or is it just happiness because their identities aren't being oppressed? Just as people cannot see light without darkness, can queer people not be prideful unless they are threatened with discrimination and violence?" Unquote. Engineering has offered us compelling questions that serve to deepen our relationship within the piece. This painting asks us to consider questions of self, history, and identity, all while offering us a gift in return, a beautifully rendered portrait of a fascinating subject. Please join me in offering congratulations to Bella Ingenieri, an artist of resounding depth and a painter with a bright future. Well done, Bella. And I believe she's not here today. to announce the first place winner. Um, and I please apologize if I pronounce the name improperly. Um, their name is uh, Shake Hogopian. Sorry, I'll say that again. Shake Hogopian. <laughs> and a few, a few remarks about the work. Um, I mean, I think it's, I think especially when you see the work in person, you'll see that this is a really beautiful, rend beautifully rendered piece. Um. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to tell them all it's about it's your piece. It's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm glad that you're up here, too. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a beautifully rendered self-portrait. Um, and um, when you see it in person, you get to see that uh, there's, there's some sort of 
hidden elements um, within the work. If you see inside of the pomegranate, you see these chess pieces and the frayed canvas, um, which is like a whole other world inside of the pomegranate, which I really appreciate it. Um, another element about the painting that I, that I, that I found that we probably all really appreciated was that there was really like a, a complementary set of mark making styles that are happening throughout the piece. Um, and those combinations of you know, brush strokes really support the strong sense of poise and vibrance within the composition. Um, like the detail in the brushwork throughout um, has uh, also sort of creates this sense of like boldness and, and energy. And um, also, you know, obviously the iconic imagery uh, helps tell the story of cultural pride. Um, specifically Armenian pride. And uh, the details uh, within, you know, sort of inspired me and, uh, and I, I imagine other viewers as well to sort of uh, investigate further into the meaning of, of these cultural elements. Um, and then when I began looking into uh, the elements depicted here, you know, I was able to learn that uh, the pomegranate, uh, Noor, and uh, Am I pronouncing that right? Newer or newer? Newer? Thank you. <laughs> um, symbolizes uh, life and abundance, um, and I imagine among other things. Um, and then in Armenian mythology, the pomegranate has 365 seeds, one for each day in the year. Um, and then uh, inside of the pomegranate, in the hand, uh, you see uh, you can see chess pieces. Uh, among other things, but the chess pieces uh, indicate also um, an element of cultural pride and impact that the game of chess has had on Arme Armenian culture. Um, and the overall position um, uh, uh, you know, of the figure, and it sort of seems to reference you know, uh, also like elements of Armenian traditional dance, which I thought was really quite nice because I, you know, I look at it and I see this very impactful poise and position of the body. And I, and when I was researching and looking into it further, I was like, oh, well, that's almost identical to the dance. So I thought it was a really well-added element. Um, so I found, I found, I think we all found that this work was you know, not only extremely captivating in its composition and expression, but it also invites the viewer to learn more about, about uh, Armenian culture. And I thought that was a really important aspect of the work. Um, and I really look forward to seeing what you do as you progress, and all of you as well. I think this is, I think every, all of you really deserve a huge round of applause. So thank you. Congratulations to everybody, and congratulations again to Shaka, whose work will be going down to Washington, D.C., to be hung in the hallways of Congress for the next year. Um, the Congresswoman is going to close out with a final remark in just a minute. I have uh, three announcements briefly to get through. One is that in the next week or two, we are gonna have an online gallery of all the work uh, that was submitted. That'll be on the Congresswoman's website, hopefully within two weeks. Uh, and we can send around a link to the teachers when that happens. Uh, all the artwork downstairs has been taken down and collected by school. So if you're a teacher here with students, please collect that artwork. It should be organized according to your school's um, students. In a moment, uh, after the Congresswoman closes us out, we are going to have a group photo. So if you have hung art downstairs, please come up to the front, and we're going to do a big group photo with the Congresswoman. 
And it, I think there were a few students who have not taken an individual photo with the congresswoman. If you fall into that category, please stick around after the group photo and we'll get those done. And without any further ado, to close it out, Congresswoman Becca Ballin. My message to you is really simple. Keep creating. Keep putting your art out there in the world. If you are going to pursue a life in art, welcome. Welcome into that incredibly important space that we need so much in this world right now. And if art is not your chosen path, keep it as something important that you go back to, to heal, to nurture, to ground. In the first few weeks when I was in Congress, I was very disoriented. And I said to my staff down there, like, I feel like I'm kind of losing it <laughs> here because I was working with some really, really difficult people in my committee, some of the most extreme members of Congress. And I couldn't seem to figure out how to get myself reset. And one of the things that I did was put on my coffee table in, in my office the work of Alison Bechdel, who is an amazing cartoonist so that every time that I would come back from a really hard committee meeting, that would be the first thing that I would see, which was really healing. And then the other thing I did was I bought an extra guitar for my office. So that I've got one in Vermont and I come back here, but that I needed to create, I needed to have music, I needed to have something that I turn back to in order to do the other work that I do. So please, Keep creativity as an important part of your life. And if you're not a senior, please contribute more art to this competition next year. Thank you so much. Students, come on up for a picture. Thank you, everybody, so much. We are grateful.